Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> well, um, weaving is a lot of fun. And what you use is uh, embroidery floss. It's, you go to a, you know, a, a craft store. Michael's or Hobby Lobby, and you can buy the stuff in a mat, just a, a ton of colors, as you can see here. It costs about 50 cents a, a packet of, um, of uh, embroidery floss. Uh, and when you do it, you don't use you don't use the entire when you actually tie a fly. This one I'm going to show you this morning when we when we practice. I've used the the full piece of uh, yarn, but when you do it, you're going to want to split out. There's there are six six different strands that makes up make up this uh, this string, and you want to split that in half. Probably you can use four strands, you can use three strands, you can use two, depending on the size of your fly. Um, but I'm going to show you two this morning. One is an overhand knot, and it's not really weaving in my in my mind. It's not really weaving. It's more a series. In my mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a series of uh, knot tying, uh, but it does make a nice tidy um, a tidy fly <coughs> fly body, um, very symmetrical and very neat and uh, and very. Um, Anal retentive, <laughs> but um, we'll we'll start with that one, and maybe if I can grab a couple of those flies, and I can show you the difference between the two. <coughs> this one is the overhand knot. Take a look at those. You better hold one of those up in front of the camera. Yeah, yeah, I should. We can see it later. Right. And this one is the Polish or shuttle weave, and those are tied on. These are what? That's a Polish. You do a Polish Polish nymph with that, or it's sometimes called a shuttle weave or a parallel weave, and it is actually weaving, and it takes a little more um, manual dexterity to to get that job done. Um, again, the, I've got this is a this is like a size six hook, and it's and it's bigger than you would ever tie. I think with well, not necessarily. You might tie tie something that big. I normally don't tie something that big, but for the sake of demonstration, I've put it on a very big hook, and I've got uh, you know the full strands of uh, embroidery floss here. And um, as we begin, you'll notice on each of these flies that, that the common denominator here is that the light color is on the, except for this one, which I did incorrectly, <laughs> <laughs> the light color is on the bottom and the dark color is on the top. And that's uh, by design because that's the way most bugs are. Um, so you need to be... Um, couple of little things are, that are mandatory and that that and, and those things that keep the white on the bottom and the dark on the top are are, uh, are those things uh, this is the overhand knot weave you've got uh, your thread or your floss uh, tied just tied on to, to the sides of the hook and then you're just simply going to Make an overhand knot, making sure that the white goes on top of the knot. That is, bring the white over the dark. And you simply pull this forward and place the dark yarn over the top, white underneath. And and, and and pull it tight. Is that the way you do it, Ned? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> it's really very simple, but it um, it does. Maybe we ended up that way. I don't know. <laughs> it does take a lot of time. I mean, it's not. To, uh, you, you've got to be very patient with it, and maybe yeah, I, don't, I don't know. Put up whatever kind of music you like to listen to on, and just kind of kind of go for it. Anybody want to try that? You better show us again. Okay. Okay. <laughs> 
Okay, so now I've got the white on this side, and the dark is on the other side, and I'm going to take the white over the top. Okay, and then tighten the knot, and where the, where the yarn crosses, you split it and put the dark on top, dark on top and then tighten it. Hmm. And you can see, did you, and that's, that's this, First. yeah, this, that's this way. Oh. <laughs> Good save. Good save. Good save. Get that on tape. <laughs> uh, again. White on top of your overhand knot. Close it down. When the knot gets Kind of do it underneath the hook here. When the knot gets up there, just slide the black over the top, right over the bottom, tighten it up. And you can see where I've gone here. Pass that around. That works. And anybody wants to have a crack at it, <laughs> come on over. Film? Are you kidding? <laughs> Extremely durable, then. Yes, it is. Uh, though most of these we do uh, put a rib on it. Doesn't have to be wire rib. Can be. It can be monofilament, but we do it just for the, for the strength. Because of course this, it's it's pretty durable. But it, without a rib, uh, it's going to be less durable. What do you call that kind of yarn? This is embroidery floss. So it has a lot of strength. Yeah, it does. And and well, you can you can weave with wire. You can weave with all manner of yeah, things. Yeah, you use like leech yarn or something like that to make it extra fuzzy. I haven't I haven't done that. It would pull apart. It would be a little bit more difficult, I think, to uh, to handle. But uh, yeah, you know, you could. It wouldn't draw down as easily. Yeah. Now this is the Polish weave. You'll notice I've. <coughs> I've got, I mean, you'll notice that I've tied. But there looks good. Uh, tied it in. Uh, dark on one side. When it, when the hook is upright, <coughs> and I tie it in. I'm fa usually facing this way. I put the white on the back, the dark on the front. And I do that for a particular reason, because I'm going to, when I actually do the weave, I'm going to turn the hook over, and I'm going to put it in the vice upside down. It's good to have a strong vice because you do have to put some pressure on this stuff during the weave, and you don't want to pull the hook out of the vise during the course of the weave. Just a little bit. I hope I don't do that today because mm -hmm. Kevin has told me that he doesn't like nasty language. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> probably help sell it. <laughs> um, so this is this is the Polish nymph weave or parallel weave or shuttle weave, but it does take some. This takes more practice, and uh, it's quicker. Um, but you'll see what I'm what I'm up to here in just a second. So I'm right-handed, so I wanted the dark color <clears throat> in my right hand because it really does all the work here during the course of the weave. Again, we want the white on the bottom, the dark on the top, and we've got the hook upside down. So keep keep that in mind. The other thing that uh, the common denominator between the two uh, the two types of weaves, or whatever, whenever you're weaving, is that you, the body of the fly needs to be very even. If you've got a grad, you, you you've, you've got lead underneath here, and um, if you don't um, make sure that the uh, that the taper is very gradual and very even all the way up and down the shank of the hook you'll have difficulty. You simply can't weave over a cliff. you got to have it go smoothly and so that uh, you don't have any peak holes in your weave and so so you don't uh, 
and you'll see you need to keep the pressure on this relatively even and to go over a, a big chunk of lead without an even taper messes that tension up. So make sure you, it gets expensive I suppose because you have to use a lot of thread to make that, to make that, uh, that even but I can't overstress the importance of that. So what you're going to be doing is bringing the white over, and I like to talk to myself while I, while I do this so I can get into a rhythm. So forgive me if I, uh, if I sing out of tune. <laughs> you bring the white over, capture with the back, over and capture, 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 over and capture. Over and capture. That's the way we do it. Yeah, over awesome. and capture. Over and capture. Over and capture. Over. Oops. Well, I'm going to stop there for the sake of the demonstration. And then what you've got, and I slipped a little bit. You've got dark on the top. Mm -hmm. White, white on the bottom, and uh, this is this is not one I'm proud of, but it's but it's done with uh, again the full embroidery thread, and uh, that's uh, th as you as you uh, as you weave with it, you'll notice that uh, every time you you make a you hook up, hook the two uh, pieces of thread together. It forms a little knuckle on the on the side of the on the side of the hook, uh, which is um, kind of a neat looking uh, um, presentation, I think, for, uh, for for the fish. And it's also a good guide when you're wrapping when you're wrapping the uh, uh, the copper wire or the monofilament. So you just go through between each one of those ribs and you can get a very uh, symmetrical looking fly. Um, it's uh, not automatic. It took me uh, quite a while in the beginning to remember what I was doing. You know, so don't get discouraged first time around. It may take you a d half a day to really get the, get the feel of it, get, get it down and even then when you try new materials, the new materials are going to provide different, uh, different uh, uh, ways to hold tension, and uh, it's uh, it's just a, you know it's just simply a matter of the experience. Um, anybody want to try that? Well, I'm before. Yeah, let's do it once again. Let's slow down. Oh, slow down a little wow. bit. All right, all right, be good. All right. Again, this is a Famous tie from Montana. But I, I don't know. Is there a, is, oh, I did. I, I, I should. He, he was the guy that did the bending fly for the McLeans. And oh. I think that was the same guy. There's a rest stop <laughs> in um, or kind of a tourist center in Butte, Montana, and they've got displays of this guy. If you're interested, <laughs> I'll see if I can find a book about how to do it. Oh, that'd be great. I mean, I've. Onion bugs, I, fly. I think so. I bet I've seen the two it. wings coming out like that. <laughs> yeah, it was a but the guy tied. I mean, he had a real job, but he tied flies for a living. <coughs> okay, I'm going to do this one Beautiful. more slowly. Is the camera? Am I uh, okay? What, there, mm -hmm. you, can you see what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Slower. Uh, much slower. <laughs> All right. So, white over, dark okay. under and back. White go. over, dark under and back. White over, dark under and back. 
white over, dark under in the back. Over and capture. 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 Over. So you always find the white first. You're making a hip hop song. Yeah. <laughs> Over and capture. Let's see how I did. That looked great. So how small a fly will you weave? I've done a uh, fourteen, and I well, I've done I've I've done I take one eighteen with just a single strand, but uh, you know you reach a point of diminishing returns on on, on the weave. Right. I think it's got to be big enough to to appreciate. Mostly, I'm, I'm working with the size ten or size twelve hooks, and these are. For the most part, well, it's not universally true, but but they are they are nymph flies, and you want them on heavy hooks because you want them to sink. They're tremendous anchor flies for for a dropper setup because they're going to really take it down. You not only put a tungsten bead on it, you put some lead on it too. The lead helps with the taper, but it also <coughs> helps with the weight. I'll just go ahead and do one from scratch. Okay, I want to see you finish it. Yeah, okay. I'm going to put the hackle. Yeah, put the head on it or whatever. Okay. I wasn't going to do a hackle one, but I can. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, again, there's, <laughs> there's a, a question of... Uh, oh, we didn't bring the hackle material. All right, I got to get out of there. Let's do something different. Stop. Yeah. Start a new yeah. shot. Yeah.